Hello YouTube, this is Insane Monster here with part 11 of What If Deku Had Anti-Venom. Now then, if you remember where we left off last time, the heroes and the villains were pre-prepping for their future plans. Though nothing concrete, they do have some things to go through. But before we get to that, I do hope you are enjoying this series as well as my other What If series, and that I am happy that you guys support my channel to the way you do. So with all that being said, before we begin, hit it. First, we'll be putting the heroes uh, set up, in, well, the hero setting up on the side for right now. As we do head over to the villains, who last we saw, the doctor just had Kurogiri give them some vials that each one had uh, labels on them for who gets what. They all each got a number of them varying in numbers as as obviously Dobby asked what exactly are these the doctor over the speaker that Kurogiri was holding stated oh if you remember whenever you first joined I believe you will recall the samples we took as they each recalled a blood sample from an odd device that would clamp onto their arms in order to draw some blood, multiple vials of it. Dobby states, ah, I see, you made copies of our quirks, right? The doctor laughs, stating, exactly. I figured it'd be a good idea, just in case. And with all for one locked up now, in Tartarus? as well as the null fragment he was bonded to destroyed, we'll need to amplify our quality. As Tomura remarks, that's so, looking at the three vials he has, as he broke them with anti-venom absorbing them into him, the quirk copying serum meant for symbiotes to devour in order to incorporate them, just went into carnage. As it appears, he gained Dobby's. Sorry, he gained Dobby's cremation, which offsets the fire weakness carnage has. Carnage is quite happy about this, as you may think. Second seems to be muscular's quirk which is enhancing muscle mass quite a bit. Could come in handy. As well as duplicate illusion core. Shigaraki was overall happy, but Carnage looked around and smirked, stating, I think one more will complete the set. As he lunges towards Kurogiri, bonding to him for a short time before returning back to Shigaraki. As Kurogiri, after the doctor asked, Are you okay? Kurogiri remarks that he's fine, but that was an odd sensation. As Carnage comes out of Homura's shoulder, remarking, I thought it'd be a good idea for two individuals to have a means of escape. After all, if something happens to you, we would be in trouble wouldn't we? As Carnage envelops Homura's arm, lifting it in order to create a red portal. As the doctor laughs, remarking, fascinating. Though, if you copy the DNA strands and such of your host, it does make sense. 
as Dobby went next, taking in what was in the vials in the fades. Turns out he ended up with Magnus, Quirk, Duplicates, and a Quirk he wasn't familiar with. The doctor remarks that it's called storage. More or less, you'll be able to store things within your symbiote now. Keep in mind that the Quirks are within your symbiote, not you. That's a big difference that separates you from both All for One and the No Moves. So keep that in mind. They're, they're not just there to enhance yourselves, but they can also be a weakness if not handled correctly. As Fades pops out stating, Hey! Don't you dare treat us like tools. As the doctor says, wouldn't dream of it. I'm just telling them to be careful with you. As Fades just scoffs. Muscular is getting excited now as he takes in his into agony. Resulting into him also getting cremation, regeneration, and wings. Wings that are quite large and powerful. Even more so when using his quirk extended into his symbiote agony to strengthen them. He was more than excited. Impressed looked at his symbiote as he asked Slasher, what do you think? As Slasher, his new symbiote states, I would imagine this could be beneficial for us, wouldn't you say? As Flasher took in what was in the vial, which was duplicates, quirk, storage, and wings. More or less playing on his more showmanship side. As duplicate asked, really? Why my quirk? Why so much? As the doctor remarked, oh, yours can be used for all sorts of things. Sneaking around without anybody noticing. Assassinating someone without being seen. And even faking an attack with a full body illusion. It has all sorts of uses that I believe would be good in the hands of those who could have the potential of using it properly. Impressed was polite enough to thank Duplicate for for this gift, as Duplicate just scratched his head, stating, fine, just don't, just be careful. As next was Spinner, he took in to his symbiote, which was named Spike, gaining cremation, wings, and shoulder jets. These being the same shoulder jets that you remember from season four from the Nomu that fought Sorry, Endeavor. It is to capitalize on his more speed aspect of his own quirk and boost it up along with giving it more aerodynamic abilities. As they then looked at their new comrades that Null and All for One brought. Whiplash after Finishing a smoke, says, this seems quite interesting, as he takes in the vials that he was given, getting cremation, wings, and storage. With the doctor stating, I'm told you are quite intelligent, so I will hope that you will use storage well. As he remarks, I'll be fine. Showing off his symbiote energy whip, now also throwing in the cremation flame quirk into the mix. And I think this will work even better as he lashes a metal crate nearby, cutting clean through it. Scorpion, becoming excited, takes in the two vials he was given. As he begins with his symbiote becoming more dragon-like, the doctor remarks, Oh yes, I did forget the state. As you do know me as doctor, 
it is actually my profession. With that in mind, as well as the fact that heroes tend to be quite the noble individuals, even giving blood donations, it isn't really that hard for me to get blood samples of theirs. I believe you may know the dragon hero Ryuko. Yes, it wasn't that hard to take a sample from her, uh, a blood donation of hers. Just had to locate it. As for the other one, it's transforming arms. As he tries it, transforming one of his arms into a large pincer. Marking, he says. Excellent. As the frost giant Uron decides to take in the two he was given. Gaining wings and regeneration. It was simple, but given the healing aspect and the flying capabilities, he isn't going to complain. As next was Vulture, who was given dragon, shoulder jets, and storage. As Vulture was pretty okay with this. As for Rhino, when he took in his, he found himself with shoulder jets and cremation. But Rhino remarking, so what, I'm supposed to be a flaming battering ram? The doctor remarks, are you disappointed? But Rhino laughing, stating, not really. I'm used to being a battering ram. So, it's fine. The troll was next. Similar to the frost giant, cars ended up with wings and regeneration. He wasn't going to complain, but found it useful yet kind of bland, compared to some of the other powers. As lastly, he takes the three meant for his direwolf and breaks it on top of his symbiote as it takes it in. This gaining the power of Brown Bear, which is from a DNA sample that came from a captured villain. Dog, also from a hero that gave a blood donation that the doctor tracked down. And Dragon as well, enabling the dire wolf to take a far more monstrous form with its symbiote. As the doctor laughs, he remarked, excellent, excellent. With this, I believe you should be more than prepared. As Sigaraki asked, what about the symbiotes that Kurogiri and Master sent to you? The doctor said, oh yes, those. Well, they'll be in my care for a time. We need preparations for the plan Master has set in the motion. Plus, I believe certain criteria should be met first before anything. As for our other new friends, as everyone looks at the Synthesoid symbiotes, being Synthesoid spider man now fused with symbiotes. As the doctor asks Kurogiri to portal them to his lab, Kurogiri obliging with Shigaraki asking, why not leave them here? The doctor remarked, your group is decently sized enough. I would imagine that a smaller group would be less detectable. Do be careful. As Dobby remarked, hey, I got a question first. I get the storage and the duplicate, but why Magnus Quirk? As the doctor laughed, remarking, oh, well, I thought it would be a good way to grab a quick hostage if necessary. As Dobby smirked, remarking, not a bad idea, Doc. Tomura wasn't that happy to have some of his forces be taken away by the doctor, but it appears that him, Kurogiri, and his master had something pre-planned. 
As for what that is, going to trust for it to wait. But Carnage asking if they are planning something to be so interesting. I am just can't stand not being able to know. But I'm also exhilarated to see what they have in store. With Tomara smirking a bit, remarking, I feel the excitement brimming off of you for what's to come. But right now we need the plan. After all, those brats are going to be annoying unless we can do something. As Carnage scoffs at this, remembering toxin and antivenom. As we head over to the teachers going to house to house, so similar to as in canon, with some added bonuses to this, with the parents of the students who have symbiotes becoming somewhat, some of them concerned, some of them confused, and some of them somewhat happy. For Toru's parents, they were glad to see her daughter smile instead of just, you know, nothing there. It kind of brought them a lot of joy. Bakugo's mom kept smacking him on the head as he kept yelling at her to stop, calling her an old hag, as she was asking Blast to keep an eye on him to make sure he doesn't do anything stupid, with Blast remarking, don't worry, keeping him alive also keeps me alive, so we're good. Me and this family was confused, but overall, it seemed... Violet didn't really seem menacing. In fact, it seemed like that Violet was a lot like Mina. Hero's parents were similar with uh, Jiro telling them about uh, how her dad was during that whole broadcast. As he said that her teachers are just crazy and insane awesome. So finding that mania is actually pretty cool. Ojiro, they were confused as well, but overall it seemed like it was okay. Almost parents thought that this would help keep her safe more than she was before. You already know how it went with Toga's parents in the last vid. As for Inko, he was surprised, but also glad. Izuku always wanted to be a hero, and Anti Venom gave him the chance he never could. So she thanked Anti Venom and asked him to watch over Izuku, which he agreed to no problem. Once they got to the dorms, Aizawa told them to get settled in because tomorrow they'll be having some visitors in order to so in order to talk and to pre prep for anything in the future that may come at them. With that, they all head off setting up their rooms. The Zuku room does have some hero stuff to it, mostly all might, but some other ones too. Especially Two boards of uh, cork boards with pins in them and papers and such, which was full of his notes on heroes and how he can use his symbiote in similar ways in order to enhance his abilities. The whole showcasing of room happens as in canon, and the moment Mineta starts being a creep, he gets taped up and webbed up as well as used well mostly we just see uh we see violet take the tape that's wrapping up Mineta, sticking it to the roof as the girls with symbiotes then use him as a pinata with the tendril smacking afterwards 
we just see Sarah dragging him away as they're going from room to room. Overall, it still ends up with Sato being the winner with all the girls and their symbiotes remarking about how tasty the cake was and such. As Zuku is actually on the roof. Koga goes to look for him and senses him all the way up there. Quickly getting there, she asks if he's okay. He just looks down worried, remarking, No, after I destroyed him, he said that it didn't matter. Their plan was already put into motion. And whatever it was, I couldn't see it. As he just sighed, with Koga patting him on the back, saying, It's fine. We'll be ready. We have all our friends with us, too. Not to mention our teachers backing us up. He smirks as he remarks, Yeah, I guess we do. He stands up, with Toga asking, So you want to climb down or swing down? He remarks, How about we fly? Confusing Toga as he picks her up bridal style, covers himself in the symbiote, and begins to sprout wings. With Toga remarking, Whoa, wait! Did you get the, uh, as Izuka reveals his face, stating, No. It seems that one for all rejected all for one, which, in my opinion, was a good thing. But I at least came out with these, showing off his dragon-like wings. As he flaps down to the ground, everyone sees him land and runs out, remarking, Dude, that's awesome! With Kirishima and Denki remarking about how cool those wings were and how does he have them? As he explains after destroying the Null Fragment that they just kind of sprouted. Aizawa showed up remarking, well isn't that interesting. Phantom popped out stating, mm, nothing new I haven't seen. As he pops out his own dragon wings. With Aizawa looking at him asking, when did we have these? With Venom stating, I've had them for a while. It's just that I don't get to use them that often. Especially during that whole forest fiasco, I didn't want to get scorched in midair, is all. With Aizawa slapping his face, remarking, Ay, you're so annoying sometimes. With Venom smirking. As they all went to bed, and everything was relaxing that night. With that, the next day came. As they got up pretty early due to a wake-up call from Aizawa. As he remarked that they have visitors today and to please come to the common room. As they came in, there was quite a number of pro heroes there as well as Class 1B that met them. As Aizawa and King Vlad began to explain that the Hero Association has recognized that they are in danger. Due to the fact of how these symbiotes work, how many that the villains have acquired is unknown, but has been shown to be a decent amount to be more than problematic. So the Hero Society has requested the aid of multiple heroes to come here in order to have your symbiotes bond to them and adapt a version of their quirk into the, into the symbiote. It should help overall deal with the League of Villains in the future. As they were shocked by this, Mina asked, wait, is this really okay? As Aizawa stated, yes, it is. Everything has already been planned and scheduled and such. And we're still working out some details, but the government has recognized the symbiote as their own sentient life form. So, there 
trying to make laws to protect any rights they may have. As to also be careful about how to deal with any villains who have symbiotes and or people who are quirkless that may end up with one. Due to the fact that this may also happen in the future. Overall, they're still working out the finer details. As they see Mandalay and Koda as well, Izuku walks over asking if he's okay. He states fine, and thanks for saving me. As Mandalay points over to Koda's new red shoes, with him just smirking. As Ajawa clapped his hands, stating that they should get to work. We'll be going down a bit of a list kind of style. As Izuku already has the magnet the magnet like ability from Wolf after destroying Zek, Ragdoll, Pixie Bob, and Cementos came up to Izuku, offering their own uh, temporary bonding. As Ragdoll and Pixie Bob remarked that they kind of helped them out, saving their teammate's nephew, as well as helping fend off the villains. So they owe them one. And Cementos remarked, Yes, and I've been told about what you gained in I Island, and I believe combining that with my own quirk, as well as Pixie Bob's, will be most beneficial. And if Ragdoll joined, you will have full aerial area situational awareness, if I'm not mistaken, as well as being able to control the area, both rock and earth, dirt and such, as well as cement and metal. Find those, and it should help with more crowd control issues in the future when dealing with the league. As Anti Venom didn't see any issue with this and began to bond with them. As this was happening to everyone, they also performed the purge effect, allowing the newer symbiotes to experience as well as learn how they do it themselves, just in case. As for Toga, she ended up with Hawks. Mariko, the rabbit hero, and Gran Torino as a way to capitalize on her more acrobatic form of combat and give her more mobility. Octave was actually liking the new wings and the added leg strength. Still needed to figure out how to work with the jet thing though. Momo axed Midnight as Midnight was okay with it. Having payback uh, separate for her for a moment and being enveloped in by a sleeper and returning. Rock Lock and even going as far as Act Ibarai to also assist as they also accept it. So Momo ends up with sleeper bonding to Midnight, Rock Lock, and Ibarai the class 1B girl with the vine hair. As for Jiro, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, Jiro, she axes Mike as a way to help boost Mania's resistance to sonic attacks as well as boost their own, which she's fine with. She also axes Barai to bond with Mania as well, which is fine. And lastly, the axes Mandalay from the Wild Wild Pussycats group in order to gain her one way telekinesis. Well, telepathy, I believe it is, where she can use this combination to increase her ability to sense vibrations and locate them, as well as transmit messages via the one way mental communication improving her ability at, of surveying the area. 
Mina wasn't really looking for something too crazy. But she decided to go with ectoplasms as she asked to have Violet bond with him as well as Manuel, the normal hero who can control water. As a result, Mina and Violet can now make clones of themselves as well as a variant of Manuel's water controlling quirk. She can now fully control and manipulate her acid. Next was Bakugo and Blast. As two were suggested to him, mostly because one was more respectful and f more uh, respectful overall, being a main category, and one was pretty chill. This being Denki and Ryuko from the Dragon Hero. As he gained the, the Quirk Dragon and Electrification into Blast. After the Purge and such, Blast became a bit more of a calmer demeanor. As Bakugo wasn't actually having his more aggressive side being amplified anymore. They figured that this would probably be the best way. Someone who shows respect for passionate thinking and such, as well as someone who tends to be pretty chill. Next would be Toru, who also acts ectoplasm, as well as Sue, if she can have Cloak on to them, which they were okay with. Imagine multiple frog agility-like invisible targets. That would be very hard to fight against. Next, we'll be going to the Class 1B student. Ibarai Axis Kamui Woods, who is there, as well as Denki and Jiro. They agreed to it, and resulting in her being having more reach, being able to do a similar motion with her symbiote that Kamui Woods does with his wooden limbs, I guess, as well as being able to electrify them, giving, well, releasing the weakness to electricity. And Jiro, well, work allows her to turn off modded sound attacks through stabbing into things, as well as minimize any damage she may take from sound based attacks. So, if RA and Scream seem to be happy with what they got. Next we have Shriek with Kendo, who she acts as Mount Lady and Godzilla, who is a hero that was showed in the first My Hero Academia movie. They agreed and bonded to, as Screech bonded to them, as well as asking Pony who has the Quirk Horn Cannon. As a result, he's able to make a full body giantification with an added tail that has spinal plates going down from the top of the spine all the way down to the tip of the tail. As for the Horn Cannon port, it allows her to separate the spinal pl plates in order to control them in a similar way. Next was Titanium with Tetsu Tetsu, as he asked Quark Kind who came by, his classmates who had the Quark Beast as well as Razor Shark. With Fork Kind's four arms, Tetsu Tetsu Steel, the Beast Quark, and the Razor Shark, we have a decently large, sharp, and four armed symbiote to deal with that has quite the durability level. As Sinso is now a member of class well B and such, as he's looking around looking for Aizawa, seeing that he's trying to deal with the annoyance that he feels from someone who stopped by, this being Miss Joke. 
as she pokes fun at him and such. He walks over and asks Aizawa if he would allow him, as well as Miss Joke. As they didn't see any problem with this, and they went ahead with Venom unlatching from Aizawa for a time. As Aizawa also ends up with Venom bonding to Sinso in exchange. Mei Hatsume was also brought in as well as some other students just for reference because we're getting down to this point as Sinso also asked Midnight also for more of a exchange kind of deal so Payback bonded to Sinso while Blackout bonded to Midnight allowing him to be able to produce a similar anesthetic as well as used a race and mixed jokes work. As for Aizawa, he asks as Mei Hachime if Venom can bond to him. Well, bond to her, as she states, Oh, that sounds interesting. Your quirk works through your eyes, right? It makes sense. As Aizawa allowed Venom to bond to her, as once returned, she shivers, remarking, that felt, uh, odd. As Nezu walks up, remarking, quite something. Honestly, I didn't think it would go this smoothly. At most, it seems as though the ones that are being bonded with have a bit of a chill going down their spine. It shouldn't be too problematic. As Aizawa asked Nezu if... He would allow him. Nezu became interested in this and asked, Why so? As he asked, I believe Venom would benefit from this. It would allow him to do a lot more and keep track of our targets from far distances much better. As he drank his tea, remarking, Very well. As Venom latched onto him, giving Venom high spec. Next, we see Mirio Togata walk in, stating, Huh, I guess you guys already got in the way. As Night Eye followed behind, pushing up his glasses, stating, Yes, indeed. So, Mirio, we talked about this. As he extended his hand, Mirio said, Yes, sir. As he allowed Riot to bond to Night Eye. Though, so once returning, Riot remarks that it seems as though, due to not being bonded to Sir Night Eye, the power seems to have modified a bit, as he explains what he appears to be capable of doing. Riot explains that it seems as though the modified version of Sir Night Eye's quirk seems to allow them to see the future up to the two hour mark. Of an individual that they come into contact with in the same member manner that is required to activate Sir Night Eye's quirk. And when they, it seems to have a bit of a limit to how many times they can do it. Yeah, don't know what the limit is of how many times they have, they can do it in a certain time period. But for you guys at home, basically, he can do it to one person once a day. But that, more or less, he does it to one person, but he can't do that to that person anymore until the next day. So he can just do it to other people. As Togata looks over, seeing Principal Nezu, and acts as him, if he would allow him, explaining what he has. With his own phase quirk, the quirk inside of Riot from when he was bonded to Stain, Sir Night Eye's quirk, combined with high spec, would allow Riot to analyze the entire situation, giving them quite the boost in combating quite a number of villains at one time, seeing all of their attacks as well as paralyzing them for an amount of time. 
seeing all of their actions would be difficult doing it to multiple people, but with high spec, as we just see Nezu sipping his tea again, stating, all right, that should be fine, but I think that's it for me today. As we just see him uh, smirking as he has Riot Bond to him. As we now get to Midnight, who has already taken in Sinzo's quirk into Payback, as well as acting Ectoplasm for the clone quirk, as well as another female hero using the quirk Serpent. Sorry, Serpent as this allows her to create symbiote serpents out of the hair part that covers the you know the symbiote that covers her hair allowing her to even suit out burst of her anesthetic from the snake mouse finding it quite useful next we go over to the symbiote the uh, members that uh, more or less jumped from the portal to help out and are now stuck here for the time being as Dylan is walking around seeing all this, he decides on three. He acts as Hawk, Denki for electrification, and the class 1B student about with the quirk Razor Sharp. As they do agree to this, and he has to stand the simio part of his body to coat them as it retracts back. Since he is half human, half symbiote, it won't really bond to them in the normal way, but he, will, he can still boost his symbiote abilities. As April Parker does something similar. As she acts is about uh, she acts is for Raka, Gran Torino, and Koru. As they did agree, as April extended her symbiote to bond with them one by one, with Cloak releasing from Toru for a time to allow this. Next, we get to Ben Riley, who has the symbiote Rampage, as he axes Tetsu Tetsu and two of his classmates, one of his classmates having the Quark Gyrate, as well as Razor Sharp, as they were okay with this with Titanium leaving Tetsu Tetsu for a time to allow it, resulting in Rampage creating powerful blade drills out of his symbiote body there, making it quite strong, both for attack and defense with this. With that all wrapped up, the heroes were stated that they could leave now to go back to their own homes. This being when Hawk gets a call on his phone to meet with the Hero Association, remarking, all right, must be pretty big if, you're, if you sound this serious, as the Hero Association is going to be giving him a secret mission. With that, Aizawa explains what they'll be doing to everyone there. That they'll be allowed to take the provisional licensing exam for the Hero Corps students of Japan. As it surprises them not knowing that first years would be allowed to take it. Aizawa explains that normally you wouldn't be allowed to take it, but given what's happened, it might be it would be best. As he remarks that for the rest of summer break, they'll be training. As they do actually have a larger field to work with. As Cemento uses his quirk to create a proper and variable uh, landscape and such. With Ectoplasm creating his clones to help. As Aizawa remarks, 
right here you'll be training to use everything you just received as well as what you've already had in order to create your own special moves. Keep in mind not to rely on your symbiote so entirely. They are your partners and will help you, but you need to also learn to pull your own weight. Understand? As they all stated, yes. After a while of training, everyone figures that they should probably make some adjustments to their hero suits in order to better utilize them. As Izuku, Toga, Uraraka, and Ida go off to the support course in order to ask for some additions, when Izuku goes to open it, it blows up in his face as Mei Hatsume is on top of him, remarking, Oh, hey, one million. As Toga uses a tendril to grab her off of Izuku, as he remarks, What are you thinking? Blowing him up? Honestly. As Mei Hatsume remarked, What? Failure is the mother of invention, after all. So, did you guys come here for costume upgrades? Ha 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 ha. As they all explained kind of what they needed. Uraraka and Ida really didn't need anything much different than what was in canon. As for Zuku, after thinking about it for a little bit, he gets the same Sue upgrade as in canon, as well as some metal folding discs that fold out using the magnetic power he hasn't got a lot of practice with, thinking he could probably use it for something later, and for something really interesting that he has planned. As for Toga, the axe is for some advisor that would help her with directions and such, as she thinks this could be useful from using when flying around using the quirks that are now within toxin. As well as some pouches to put on her belt in order to store some stuff she may need like some chocolate bars and such to feed toxin with. As all this is taken care of, everyone gets some upgrades into their costume and practices their new moves and such. This time practicing along with Class 1B. Since they'll be going to different areas, it might be good for them to train head to head with one another. As they do some sparring practice with one another as well as figuring out some special moves for themselves in private. It ends up boosting their overall experience as well as help speed up the process of them becoming more adjusted to the changes in their symbiotes. As Izuku is working quite hard in order to keep track of everything that he's trying to learn and figure out how he can use it best, since he doesn't know what kind of things that they'll be having in the exam. This continues until they are told that tomorrow they'll, they'll be taking buses to go to the exam site, and that both Class 1A and Class 1B will be taking it at different sites. With all that in Considering, take the night to relax, unwind, and to focus yourselves. You, this chance doesn't come around that often, so make sure to take this seriously. As all the students remark, yes sir. Being nervous, they end up going back to their dorms to unwind, relax, study up on what they've already covered, and various other things, depending on the individual. As 
we just see Toga and Azuku deciding to take a nap in some webs they made just to relax in the common room. With Mineta stating, oh come on! Really? Who's gonna clean this up? And how dare you! With Toga shooting off some webs covering Mineta's mouth with no one even uttering a word to complain about it. With Mineta thinking, why? Why is it always me? Why can't I have something for once? With all that taken care of, this is the end of part 11 of What If Deku Had Anti-Venom. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, and I'll hope to see you guys later. So, see ya.